stay for that. Uh, and also, after the meeting, we are having uh, lunch downstairs. The ladies are down preparing it as we speak. So uh, stay for the meeting and for the meal after, uh, after the meeting. Uh, also, community youth services tonight at the community center at 6 o'clock. It runs from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Andy Gunlack will be speaking and uh, Catherine, Catherine and Tyler Hopper will be doing the music. So you want to make sure you're in for that. Uh, Lenten service this Wednesday is at noon at the First Baptist Church. Jim Steingast will be speaking. And also all through Lent, the men's prayer breakfast will be every Thursday morning at 7 a.m. at the Shepherd's Inn. Uh, home extension is this Wednesday at 10. Uh, the Bible Club Open House. If you did not sign up for the tickets for the Bible Club Open House, uh, they have run out of pre-sale tickets. Uh, they've already given out 900 of them. Uh, so you'll have to wait at the door for your ticket. So uh, they, they're giving out 100 at the door on a first-come, first-served basis. Also, this Saturday, great fellowship event, bowling at Mount Joy Lanes. How many of you know where Mount Joy Lanes are? few of you. Uh, it'll be this Saturday from 3.30 to 6. It's right off the Knox exit uh, from Interstate 80. It's uh, you take a right off the exit, and it's right on the left there, about the second building in. Um, bowling from 3.30 to 6. The, the church is covering the bowling. Uh, the pizza is being donated. And all you need to do is show up and bring a snack to share. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So uh, everyone's invited. I think how many lanes do we have reserved? Six lanes reserved. So we've got enough room for everybody here to come and have a good time. So that's uh, this Saturday from 3.30 to 6 at Mount Joy Lanes. Also next Sunday... Um, Scott's Sunday School class will be hosting two young men uh, that he traveled to Burma with. Uh, they're 20 and 21 years old, and they're getting ready to leave to be uh, full-time missionaries to China. And so they'll be here next Sunday morning, and I was told to tell you that the, the class is going to start at 9.30. Not a Leatherwood 9.30, but an actual 9.30. So if you could show up a couple minutes early, we'll get the, the opening taken care of, and we'll get downstairs uh, 9.34 to hear from that. Does anyone else have any other announcements? Alright, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come into your house. And Lord, we come to worship you, to lift you up, to hear from you, and Lord, just to glorify your name. So Lord, today... May we say that we have met with you. And Lord, may we know in our hearts that you have been here and you have been with us. So Lord, send your Holy Spirit now on us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's all stand up. Let's go ahead and greet one another this morning. Make sure you tell someone. That you're we are the church. Remember, we are the church.
Doreen? Doreen. Yeah, seven. Megan, seven. I'm sick this morning. Are there any others? Okay, two unspoken. That plane load of Army Rangers are now in Kandahar. Okay. Any others this morning? All right, let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for we have seen your mighty hand at work this week, and Lord, we're so grateful. Lord, we, we think of the World Day of Prayer Services that we had here Friday, and Lord, we thank you for everyone who attended those, and Lord, what a wonderful service it was. And Lord, we thank you for... Uh, for, for Don Jeffers and for his being able to be here this morning. What a blessing and an honor it is to, to be back in, in church. And Lord, we thank you for him being able to be here. Lord, we thank you for uh, this new cross that we received. And Lord, uh, it's just a, a reminder of what you uh, endured in this Easter season. And Lord, we, we pray that it would uh, uh, just remind us of, of the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Lord, we we praise you this morning that we don't serve a dead God, but we serve one who is alive and well. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, Lord, we also thank you for grandchildren being being here and for for, for safe traveling, Lord, and for this the experience of snow camp once again being just a such a blessing among our young people. And Lord, we just praise you for each one of those that made a commitment to follow you. And Lord, we we ask that you would uh, keep the devil at bay from the, from their lives and from what they're trying to do. And, and Lord, for all of those that were trying to, to make changes and remove obstacles in their lives that were keeping them from you, Lord, we, we pray that you would uh, just keep them uh, to those changes and, Lord, uh, uh, help them to, to get plugged in and to, to have a support system around them where they can, can deal with all of these things. Lord, we also just... Uh, just want to, to bring all of our requests to you this morning. We think of uh, Mandy and Debbie that will be traveling to Cleveland. And Lord, we pray that they would be able to help her with her migraines. And Lord, we, we pray for a great trip and a safe trip uh, uh, for them. Lord, we think of Harold Starcher's dad, Clark, uh, this morning. who's in the hospital and, and uh, in intensive care. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with him and, and uh, just uh, uh, strengthen him and allow him to, to, to gain full health again. We, we pray for Tracy's mom who's having surgery tomorrow, Lord. We just lift her up and, Lord, ask you to to, to move uh, in the surgeon's uh, uh, hands and in their minds. And, Lord, just allow them to know what to do and help the procedure uh, to go smoothly. Lord, we think of Dave this morning and, and his back. And, Lord, we just uh, pray for, for healing. Lord, we pray for the pain to be taken away. Lord, we know that you can restore this back to what it needs to be, Father. And we pray that you would do that. Lord, we, we, we think of Maggie uh, that, that is down with mono, and Lord, we just pray for her. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, just allow her a, a time of peace and rest to recover. And, and Father God, that she has a lot of important things going on at school. But Lord, uh, just uh, allow her to get back to health and not try to, to do too much. And Lord, uh, we just uh, pray for her. Lord, we also think of Megan, who's homesick this morning. Lord, we just ask for you to move over her and to take this sickness away, Father God, and just allow her back to full health. Lord, we think of this Dory, and, and, and Lord, uh, uh, we just ask that you would uh, just touch her and, and take this away from her, Father God, and the, the, that uh, she would be brought back to full health. And Lord, also for this uh, this plane full of Army Rangers in Canapar, we pray for, for them and also for the unspoken requests that were mentioned and those that were not mentioned, Father God, we just place them in your hands and under your care. And Lord, we just ask uh, that you would move and work for the rest of our service here today. Lord, that your presence would be here as we continue on uh, in, in the annual meeting, Lord. And also, Lord, we pray that you would just be with us even in our fellowship time of, of the dinner afterwards. Lord, just come here now and speak to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank the ushers that come forth for morning times and offerings.
Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given us. And now, Lord, we just return a portion of that to you. And Lord, I ask you to use it to further your kingdom at Motherwood Church. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fools of many, they rise against me, but I will hold my ground. I will not fear the war, I will not fear the storm, my love is on the way, my love is on the way. Oh, yeah. 
All right, kids, you are dismissed for Children's Church. Is there anyone else here that are bummed out because the Olympics are over? No one likes the Olympics anymore. Uh, all you have to do is look in my office and know that I'm a big sports fan, but the Olympics always hold a special part in my heart because, I don't know what it is, maybe it's because the, the, the athletes that are competing in the, the Olympic Games aren't usually the professionals making millions and billions of dollars. They're usually just following a passion that they have. They're usually proud to, to represent their country and their team. And it's the best athletes from all around the world coming together. And they have such incredible backstories, and they let you in on this. On, and, and we love watching the Olympics. That, that's all that there is to it. And, man, it was on at every hour of the day just about at our house. If there was someone in the house, it, the, the coverage was on one of the 17,000 channels that had the Olympics on this time. Uh, my wife is really into curling. I have to... She, she loves curling, and it, it's fascinating because there's so much strategy, and I think I'm an expert now after watching it for about two Winter Olympic games in a row, but to, Noah loves the bobsled and the luge and the skeleton. Anything that was on that, you know, going down that track 150 miles an hour, he was tuned in, man, uh, and he'd ask every day, is the sled on, is the sled on? And Addison, she likes the hockey tournament. She tunes in to watching it out. I have this picture in my head after the United States beat Russia in the quarterfinal, or the, in the preliminary rounds, the kids were running around the living room going, USA, USA. And that, uh, that's, that's pretty special. But, uh, and I love hockey, I'm intrigued by curling, but man, the skiing and the snowboarding stuff that they do in the Olympics is unbelievable. How many of you have tried skiing or snowboarding before? Is that not unbelievable what they do? I mean, seriously, I've tried skiing and, and snowboarding a few times, and it's just a really ridiculous sport, and uh, and I, I can't do it, but uh, they, they make it look so easy. But the greatest part of the Olympics is this. Everyone knows where they fit in. Everyone knows why they were sent to the games and what they're to compete in. And, and everyone in there is set to inspire the people in their country. They all know why they're going. They know, all know how to do well in their sport. And, and, and many of them will have a story that will resonate with people for years because of what happened to them in the Olympic Games. They know exactly where they belong. They know exactly the reason that they went. But let's come contrast the Olympic athlete with the typical person that attends church on Sunday morning. The athlete, they have a title like snowboarder. And you don't often see snowboarders competing in figure skating or, or competing in hockey. They know exactly what they're there for. What title do you have in church? Or the Olympics, the Olympian knows that that he's being sent there to represent his country and to inspire his country. Who are you supposed to inspire? And the athlete, they know the ins and outs of their sport. They know the purpose for and, and how to do well in their sport. What is your job and your purpose and your goal when it comes to church? And Olympians know that the stories that they will have will be used to inspire others for years to come. Are you using your story to inspire others? As Paul, he's beginning to wind down his letter to the church at Rome. And he begins this talk on, on his ministry and the purpose of his ministry. And, and in, these, in this passage, in these verses, Paul sounds more like the Olympic athlete that knows exactly where he was going, who he is being sent to, what the, 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 the goal is, than the average church goer. Paul is very clear that, that his ministry has a title. He's very clear that, that his ministry is for a certain people. His, he's clear that his ministry has a specific job to do. And because of that, he has a story to tell. 
If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to Romans 15, 14 through 22. And the title in my Bible of this passage is Paul the Minister to the Gentiles. These are his words. I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. I have written to you quite boldly on some points as if to remind you of them again because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles with the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God, so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who are not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. You see, there's no doubt in Paul, Paul's mind about what his ministry title is, about who he is sent to, about, about where he fits in, about the purpose of his mission work. He knew exactly where he fit into the plans of God and his family and his kingdom. And so my question this morning for you is this. Do you know where you fit in? Do you know your place in God's kingdom and God's family? That's what I want you to keep in the back of your mind as we, as we look and, and look closer into this scripture. But before we do, I'm going to ask that. Scott, would you open us in prayer this morning? The first thing that I notice in this passage is that God is going to give you a title. And if you watch the Olympics on TV, how many of you watched at least a little bit of the Olympics? Okay, most of you. If you watched even just a little bit, um, every day the, the media would have someone into their studio, and the first thing that they would do is they would have them introduce themselves. So they would say, hi, my name is Black. And then they would immediately tell what event that they were competing in. It was almost like they were giving them a title, or even in the opening ceremonies, when all the countries were rushing into the stadium, and, and they would pan in and they would focus on, on one of the, the people in, or individuals from the country, it always posts on the bottom of the screen, this was their name, this was their sport. It was basically giving them a title. So you would see Sean White, snowboarder, or Bodie Miller, downhill skier, or, or Charlie White and Merrill Davis, ice dancers. I don't even know how that's a sport. But uh, these two weeks, and probably even for a lifetime, these people are going to be defined by the title of their sport. And as Paul was beginning his ministry, he was given a title or two throughout his ministry. He became one of the apostles. He served and he traveled as a missionary. He preached a sermon or two and the letters of the churches made him a teacher to them. But Paul was known and given a title by God that encompassed everything that he did. Here's what the scripture says. He says, I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. I have written you quite boldly on some points as if to remind you of them again because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus. Paul's title was that of a minister. He was a minister of Christ Jesus. And, and, and this title was given to him by Jesus Christ himself. And Paul took the title that he was given seriously. The, the title of minister shaped everything that Paul did. 
And it, and, it, and it planned out the future of everything Paul did. Every act that he did, or, 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 or everything that was form shaped or seen through the, it was seen through the lens of minister in Paul's life. Paul had this title. You are going to be a minister. And the first thing that we have to, to uncover in our own life is, what is the title that God has for us that's going to shape our futures and our lives? In Ephesians 4, Paul gives a list of possible titles that God can place on your life. Listen to this. It says, It was He, speaking of Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Now, I know many of you are thinking, those titles sound so unofficial. And, I, and, and they, sound, or they sound so official, and they, they sound so far above me, and they sound like something that you know, only a professional would do. I personally believe that everyone who rises up to maturity takes on one of those, one of those titles in their lifetime. But there are people that disagree with me. I will say that. However, there are some titles that you cannot dispute. There are some things in Scripture that, that, that say that everyone gets a title. Or everyone gets a gift, a, a gift, and there's no dispute in these things. Listen to this from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. And by all, they really mean all. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common goal. Also, in Romans 12, 6, if we look back just a few chapters, it says this, we all have different gifts according to the grace given us. And in 1 Peter 2, 5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Now that word for priesthood is also the same root word that's used as Paul describes that he is a minister. So it says, you are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy minister, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now I want you to look to your neighbor and tell him, you're a minister. But, but when Paul and Peter use words such as each one and all and you, he's speaking to every one of us. That every one of us will at least have the title of a spiritual gift, and each one of us will have a ministry in everyday life. The gift and title given to each one of you is going to be different, because we all have different gifts, we all have different workings, we all have different skills. But do you know the title that the Lord has given you? That's a big part of discovering your future. Minister? According to Peter, that's one, that's a title given to each one of us. What about healer, discerner, pastor, prophet? Do you even know what title the Lord has given you? So the first thing God will do in your ministry is God will give you a title. The second thing is God will give you a people. Now, the Olympic athletes, they were sent to Russia for the games in 2014, but they weren't really sent there for the Russians. They were sent there to represent whatever country they came from. And, and, and this differs a bit from what God does. See, God will give you a title, and then he will put a group of people on your heart. And he will send you and your gift or your title to work and be effective in reaching a certain people. Paul knew exactly about this. This is our scripture again. He says, I have written you quite boldly on some points, as if to remind you of them again. Because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. You see, Paul had this, this, this title of minister that shaped everything that he did, but he was sent specifically to who? To the Gentiles. It wasn't that Paul was just going around ministering to whoever would hear or, or wandering around aimlessly to anyone, speaking to anyone that would listen. Paul was sent to a specific people, the Gentiles, and he focused his ministry on them. He did this at the sake of his own people, because Paul was a Jew. 
And we know even earlier in Romans that Paul's concern for the Jews didn't wane, but the majority of Paul's ministry was focused on the Gentiles because that's who Paul was sent to. Despite all of his emotions or feelings uh, toward the Jews, he still said, I am sent to the Gentiles and the majority of my efforts are going to be into getting them saved. God has sent you to a people. Now, he may not send you to a group as large as the Gentiles. Yeah, praise him for that. Because that's, that was a large group in Paul's day. But God has a specific people in mind whenever he reveals his title to you. It may be your workplace. You may be sent to the work, fellow workers of XYZ Corporation. That may be the people that you are sent to. It may be your family. You may be sent to, to, to save and, and share the gospel with the rest of your family members. It may be a particular town. It may be a certain country. It may be that you are sent to help the poor or the wealthy of a certain, of a certain community. It may be that you are sent to the church or the unchurched. It may be.